guess I was just trying to say, like, it just feels more on the spot. <laughs> it is different, you know, and that's been part of what we've been learning in this new COVID world we've been dealing with, right? We've all had to kind of go through a lot of different, uncomfortable things. It's been really tough, but that is part of the virtual class is that you all have to have cameras and they have to work, you know. I think they have some on in-person classes. I know some people who are taking those. They're going back to in-person. Okay. So this first one, how many to make out do you? Three of them? It's three of them, right? Yeah. Okay. So I know Anthony has this one. Anthony, you want to help me through this one? Sum of two numbers is 37 and their difference is nine. Find the numbers. Um, so first what I did was I got X plus Y equals 37, which is the number you're given. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then I did X minus Y equals nine. And that's because the difference between the two numbers is nine. So the difference just means, you know, X is subtracted by Y equals nine. Mm -hmm. the difference. Um, so then I had to add the two equations together. So you get two X minus well, minus nothing because positive y and negative y cancel each other out. And then 37 plus 9, which gives you 46. And that's called the elimination process. We eliminated the B y variables. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then 2x divided by 2 because you're trying to get the x by itself, which gives you 23. Mm -hmm. So now you have to do it again for the y. And this time I just did 23 plus Y equals 37 because now we have 23, which is X. So you plug that in for X. Plugging in 23 to X and solving for Y, which is? It's 14 after you subtract 23 from 37. Okay. And that's and we have these two, we plugged it into the one that's adding. So if we add these two numbers, it should be 37. Is there another way we can check that? Yes. Yeah, just plug in, just plug them in. To the other equation, right? There's two equations. So yeah. is that true, right? So we can check it by plugging it into the other equation. Might be a good, good sort of thing to know. Like if you have a test or something and you want to check your solutions, that might be a way to do it. Make sure they work for both equations. All right, that was what, 77? Yeah. Um, sorry, so um, were we checking for um, if it's the right, um, e uh, if we did the correct equation, it would it would be like um, like 23 plus the Y, I would put um, the 14 in there and it'd be 37. So. If it's 37 and then if it's nine, then we got the correct answer. Yeah, so if the you're able side to, came. Yeah, if you're able to plug your solutions back into your equations and they give you true statements, that means it's the correct solution. Okay. Teacher. Yeah, what's going on? Please, in this case, uh, do we need to write like the solution is x, y equals like, uh, we can write the solution as a point? Like, uh, uh, and here, when we're talking about words and they're asking you a question, mm -hmm. there's probably not really need to like write it as a point. If we're doing graphs and stuff like that and solutions to lines on a graph, then we probably mm -hmm. definitely want the points. But here we're talking about like word problems and they're like mm -hmm. the sum of two numbers and their differences. They're saying find the numbers. So maybe I should really do some more English. Like the numbers are 14 and 23 is probably the way our solution should look, right? Yes. But yesterday you like you like to write right, the answer as a point, like as X, Y. Uh, that's, like, that's when we're doing like pure math. Here we're answering some English. So. Okay, because I, I did them like the solution is X, Y equals to, uh, third, uh, you know, yeah. 14, I mean, I, I would still know what you're talking about if you gave me a point. But I would probably, I, if I were answering this, I would probably answer it like the numbers are 14 and 23. 
let's say it, we can we don't need to create them as a point x y not right? not if you're answering something in english right okay the other one we're doing like pure math you're just talking to me in pure math this we're throwing some english in there okay because yeah, those, those things those course. things the, the variables yeah, usually yeah. represent something very specific and i really probably should have done that first off right mm -hmm. first off i should really define my variables right yes. i kind of skipped this step first number right second number this is really the first thing I should do when I'm writing out an equation. And I kind of glossed over it, to be honest. Okay, thank you. I want to just make sure what is your preference. All right, so I... yeah. Okay. And so we usually when we do word problems, our variables are going to mean something very specific. So I'm probably going to want some sort of English sentence that says the first number is, the second number is. That one we're just talking about numbers and the next one it'll be talking about something that's not just numbers it'll be talking about something maybe a little more specific so 85 says june needs 48 gallons of punch per party and has two different coolers to carry it in the bigger cooler is five times as large as the smaller cooler how many gallons can each cooler hold that is quite a lot of words so i don't know if i should way I think if I share like the document itself this is a lot of words kind of highlight and underline it or two that's not the one I really want huh? I did download the right one didn't I hope so Maybe not. Maybe I'm wasting time. Four, two. No, it's not on it. Dang it. I have it on my other screen right quick. All right. So y'all should be able to see it on here. All right. Who was in group two? Room one, that's where I was at. Uh, Charmaine. All right, so if June needs 48 gallons of punch for a party and has two different coolers carried in, the bigger cooler is five times as large as the smaller cooler. How many gallons can each cooler hold? So how did we set this up? Is it my groups? Yeah, it was Charmaine, Gania, Josh, and Kathleen. Okay, I mean, in this case, I did teacher, I did X plus Y equals to 48. What is X? What is Y? X is the number and the small, the small and the, the large, uh, the large gallons equals to 48. Is okay. the larger container, is that what you're saying? I want to say the X is the small continuous and the Y is the largest continuous, the large. And both equals to 48 gallons, the two color. You say X is the smaller one and Y is the larger one? Yes. Okay. Then he said the, the smallest has five times the largest. And then I did X equals to five Y. Are you okay with me? Yeah, and so that is coming from, I draw on there. Uh, the bigger is five times <laughs> larger than the smaller is where yes. we're getting this thing from. Yes, and then it's going to be X equals to five Y. In this case, I am going to have two equation. It's like system equation, one is X, plus y equals to 48. The second one is x equals to 5y. Now I need to solve for y. I want to just uh, replace the x in the first uh, equation, like 5y equals y equals to 48. Then 6y equals to 48. And in the end, I want to find my y 
my largest one equals to eight. Okay. So yeah, you, you're you saying all the right things. I just wanted to slow down maybe a little bit, make sure everyone's getting this right quick. Okay, sure. Can I delete this thing? Delete this, delete this. It's like just, okay. So June needs 48 gallons of punch for a party, has two different coolers to carry it in. The bigger cooler is five times as large as the smaller cooler. How many gallons can each cooler hold? So we know both of them can hold what, 48 gallons? Yes, 48 together. gallons. It doesn't really say that like very explicitly. You know. <laughs> it really doesn't say that the volume of those two things is that many, if I'm being honest. But, but he said he carried them when he wants something. Yeah. When he carried them. The carry is the, the key there. The bigger cooler is five times as large as the smaller cooler. So you did X equals five Y. Yes. Uh, I think that's going to make X be the larger cooler, just the way you have that set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, depending how you set up your equation, it, should make it might change this, right? It just depends how you set up that second equation. It's OK. Mm -hmm. You'll still get the same two numbers. Yeah. And so we know X is 5Y. We know X plus Y equals 48. These things are really kind of set up to lead you one direction. Like the previous one, I feel like was like really set up to do the elimination step. Mm -hmm. This one, I think she said it, but we know X is 5Y and we know X plus Y equals 48. There's really only- the substitution. I did with the substitution. Yeah, so everywhere I see an X, I can plug in a 5Y. So here, 5y plus one goes into this x, right? Is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I can replace this x with the 5y. Mm -hmm. Everything's a little different on my computer than it is on that tablet. Okay. 5y plus y equals 48. 48. There we go. And then we have xy equals 48. Yeah. Like terms we can combine. X, Y equals 48. Oh, man. And now we're doing Y is equal to? 48 over 6. Uh -huh. 48 divided by 6 is? And then 8. 8. Y equals to 8. That is great. Then we're going <laughs> to replace it in the, first, in the second equation. Where yeah, so we, we, have we have our solution. And like the, this step, I feel like people just like, they're like, I'm done with my solution. No, 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 don't, don't, don't zone out. What are we doing? Like come back and interpret this. We have one of the things we want. We still need to find X. So how do you find X? Yes. It's just a two because I have a, my X equals to five Y. I mm -hmm. just replaced the Y five, five times eight equals to four. And my X equals to four. Okay. And if you did this, you did all the math absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if your boss asked you how many gallons can each cooler hold and you told him X equals 40, Y equals 8, he's probably going to be a little annoyed with you, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you didn't really answer his question. It's like, what are you doing? So how would you answer that question? How many gallons can each cooler hold? The smaller is going to hold eight gallons. The bigger, the biggest one is going to hold uh, forty. Yeah, so 40. the small cooler is eight gallons. Uh, yeah. The larger, the larger is yeah, hold for forty gallons. And. But but here, teacher, excuse me, they didn't ask for the interpretation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I guess like if we were asking this, we would probably tell you to interpret it. But if if it's in, if they're asking you a question in English, you should probably in general give an interpretation. You should probably answer them also in English, not in math, right? It's like. Yeah, it's not a writing class. <laughs> Math and English are two different things sometimes, I think. Okay. It's like a different language.
Yeah, a lot of things we learn in, in math are kind of universal, like language wise, like they use the same notation. There was one mathematician that developed his own, uh, Manu Jean is his name. He developed his own notation and he learned math in, in, in the dirt with the stick apparently. Uh, but anyway, so what's something I can do to make sure I got the right answer? I know what, Ooh. five times eight is 40, right? That's one way I can check it. Well, check it if it's a true statement. I check how? Yeah. I have 40 and eight, what, what do I know about those things? They should also- 48 is a true statement. It but should can... add to 48, right? 40 and eight is gonna add to 48, that's it. Yeah. Teacher, I have a question, please. Yeah. Here, here, we are here. I, if I need to, I need to justify what is the x and what is the y, right? Let's x equals the largest and let's y equals the, right? I need to justify or I want to just write my equation. Uh, you mean like define your variables? No, no, and it's not about yes. Yeah. This yeah, you should always define your variables first. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Because I just pick up them in the homework and they give. And, and if I'm being honest, maybe like maybe even just saying, if you don't know which one's going to be larger, you can always just say gallons in one container, gallons in the other container, right? You don't have to put like those sort of things on there. If that helps, that might help with the definition. Instead of saying larger and smaller, you might say it's just one and the other, and then start setting them up if you don't know. Okay. Because of it, that that changes a little bit with how you write this x equals 5y, whether you do x equals 5y or y equals 5x is going to determine like which one comes out larger, right? Yes. So depending how you set things up, it might be one or the other, but yeah. Okay. Questions about this one? Okay. And so the last one is what, 89? Room two with Carson, Jane, Jaina, Michael. Nancy bought seven pounds. Did you get to this one? I did not. I'm working on it right now as we're going through it. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, if need be, I got it. I can go through it. All right, so Nancy bought seven pounds of oranges and three pounds of bananas for $17. Her husband later bought three pounds of oranges and six pounds of bananas for $12. What was the cost per pound of oranges and the bananas? So what are my variables? What'd you let your variables be? Bananas and oranges. Okay, what letter did you use to represent them? I used X for bananas and Y for oranges. Oh, y'all yeah, like like those X's and Y's. Make sure to do B's nose. It's just easier, I guess. I don't get it mixed up with anything else. <laughs> we can use anything we want, though, right? I was like, what I was hoping. Yeah, we'll take that. Well, let's get this. That's good enough. X is the number of bananas. Y is the number of oranges. Okay. And then I look at the sentence. Nancy bought seven pounds of oranges. Come on. Uh, I see seven pounds of oranges, three pounds of bananas, and it was for 17. So how do I write that? Translating what? M math to English? English to math? Sorry. Seven Y plus three X equals 17. Absolutely. So that's coming from that statement. Uh, it's like green now, maybe her husband later bought three pounds of oranges and six pounds of bananas. This is like something straight from Facebook almost, I feel like. How do I write this out? 
Um, 3y plus 6x equals 12. Okay. This one, I don't feel like it's... Mm, hmm. I don't really feel like there's one correct way to do this. I feel like the other ones, like they were really leading you to a certain direction, like either substitution or elimination. This one, eh, not so much. I feel like it's probably going to be equally as difficult either way. Yes. Wouldn't you just combine like numbers? No. No? Oh. Where? What? Wow. Well. What are we combining? Well, 7y and 3y, right? 7y and 3y? I don't know if that's going to help us get rid of it, though. We want to get rid of stuff. I think we need to times the first one by, times minus two. This one by a minus two? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Minus two to, uh, to elevate your, your y. Your y okay, so it sounds like y'all are wanting to go the elimination route. So if I'm looking at my elimination route, I'm looking at 7y and 3y. So I'm thinking about yes. least common multiples of 7 and 3, or do I want to do like a least common multiple of my x's is what, 3 and 6? So if we, have to pick, if we have to pick one of these, which one would you pick? 3 and 6? Yeah, 3 and 6 is going to be a lot easier. And what is 3 and 6? It is six itself. Okay. So we want to make, and this is my X terms, right? These were my X terms I was talking about here. Ah, stupid draw, come on. These are my X's here. So if I'm looking here at this first equation, how do I make my X here a six? And this one, how do I make this one a six? Well, this one is already a six, it's a positive six. So I gotta make this one a six, but I should also probably make it since this one is positive, I should make this one. And if you gotta do it in two steps, it's fine, but I'm just gonna do it in one. I should also make this one negative, right? Yeah. Yes. And so what am I gonna do? What's... You wanna times the whole equation by times- We wanna two. multiply the entire equation by a single number. Yes. So what number do I gotta multiply three by to make it a negative six? Two. Two and- Oh, a negative six? Yeah, make it negative, yeah. So we're multiplying by a negative two. We gotta multiply it there. We gotta multiply it. That's another term. And don't forget, you got multiple terms. It gets multiplied to each term that's in there. We're multiplying the left side by the same number we're multiplying the right side. So maybe I should write it out separately because it really is kind of separate. Uh, is there, where's my annotate? Oh, oh man, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Uh, where's my back step? No back step on this one. It's like the annotation tools are different on this one a little bit than what they are. Oh, it's a deleting everything. That's stupid. All right. Never mind. You have the eraser tool selected. Yeah, it should. I'm trying to just delete that arrow and it's deleting like everything. That's annoying. Okay. Never mind. If I multiply seven by a negative two, what does that give me? Negative 14. Minus 14, and there is a Y on this guy. If I multiply three by a negative two, what does that give me? Negative six. A negative six. Negative six. X. And there's an X on that guy. And then what am I doing? Uh, 17 times negative 2. 17 times negative 2 will give me a negative, what, 34? 
Okay, so why did I do this? I set it up for what? Elimination. Elimination. Can we eliminate this thing now? My dog's about to eliminate me, apparently. Shush. Shush. Oh. Yeah, this positive six and negative six. Uh, eliminate. Yes, those two will eliminate. So these two guys, right? No more. What do I have left? Uh, your y's and your equals to. Yeah. Minus 14 and a positive 3 is going to give me what? Negative 11. And that's no more, but we have something like equals. Mm. Hopefully it's even. <laughs> negative 22. And negative 22. Okay. That seems like an even multiple 11. What is my y equal to? We're almost there. Equals to two. Y is equal to two. All right, great. Like I did a good amount of work. Am I done? No, you gotta find X right. now. All right, so where where are we plugging this into? Which one? Uh, I did the three y plus six x. All right, so three y plus 6x. So 3 instead of my y, now I can plug in a 2 plus 6x is equal to 12. Yeah. Oh, and then... Solve, yeah. Solve this thing. 6 plus 6x six is equal to a 12. And then off, or remove the 6. Then we move the 6, we get 6x six is equal to 6. six and then we get x is equal to 1. 1, that's it. So now, I think we got the two numbers. We just have to go back and look at what the heck do these things mean? And we have to look at whether they really are the solutions, right? So if we do 7 times 2 plus 3 times 1, so plugging those numbers back in. So I'm just going to draw over these equations probably. But if I do plug in my 2 into my y, if I plug my 1 into my x, does that make this thing true? Yes. 7 times 2 gives me 14, plus 3 gives me 17. So doing these checks, even I know we use this one to find it, but it probably isn't a bad idea to also plug it back in. It should still work. 6 times what 1 equals 12. So checking these, right? They seem to check out. So it seems like we have the correct solutions. Now, what the heck do these things, these things mean? If we put those two things together, we get 17. If we put those two things together, we get $12 per pound. What does this mean? The cost of the oranges and the cost of the bananas. Yeah, I don't think I defined this thing right. Uh, yes, we find them right. Seven, yeah, that's it. What was the cost per pound of oranges? Yeah, the cost of the oranges is, uh, I don't know, what, uh, is your why? Oh. Because to me, it's the opposite. Uh, I don't think we define these variables correctly because it says, what was the cost per pound of oranges and bananas? And we said the number of bananas, number of oranges. It should be cost per pound, right? It's per pound, yeah. This should say cost per pound. Yes, so, what this is. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so. I didn't realize that. I didn't answer what they were asking, did I? Uh, so... We grab this. So we're a dollar a pound, and the oranges were two dollars per pound. Yes. Yeah. They give us the number of pounds they want to find, 
the cost per pound. It still, we still solved it correctly. The cost per pound of oranges. I thought they were giving us the other way around. My, I didn't read it correctly. So the oranges would be $2 a pound? Yeah, so the cost per pound of bananas would be $1 per pound for bananas, $2 per pound for oranges. Because if you want to find total cost, you're multiplying cost per pound by the number of pounds you get, right? Yeah, Anthony's got it, there we go. Um, I did this a slightly different way, but still got the same answer. That is completely possible. Okay. <laughs> Bananas cost. I didn't, I didn't make a negative. Pounds. I just made them both positive. And you went to add them or did you subtract the two equations? Uh, well, in mine, I guess I switched the, uh, the variables, I guess. X was oranges and Y's was bananas. Mm -hmm. So I made it so that the, or both the uh, Y's would match and then subtracted it from there. So I did it, the first equation uh, times four, the second times two, that would equal, um, shut up phone. Uh, both y's would equal 12, and then you multiply the whole equation by that, and then subtract it, so that would equal uh, 22x equals 44, so x equals 2, and then plug that into the first equation, make that down, y equals 1. Sounds like you're doing things correctly. I think I followed you, but I might have... I skipped a few steps, so... <laughs> yeah, it was. It's, it's a bit hard to, like, to listen to people do it in... I don't know. Oh, yeah, I get you. All right. <laughs> just want to make sure I didn't mess you up. But as long as you got like the two, these two similar equations and you got just your X by itself and then you plug it back in, solve for your Y or vice versa. Yep. As long as you're getting the right two solutions, it's probably done correctly. Gotcha. Okay. <sighs> Questions about this one? Okay. So we have a few more questions uh, to do today. Let's stop the annotations. There we go. I want to clear my annotations. We have what, 93, 97, 101, and 113. So I want to do, I'm going to set up these three at least, get this set up, but I definitely want to walk through 113. We're definitely going to need to walk through that thing. So set up for 93, 97, 101, and then I'm going to walk through that last one. 93, 97, 101. And then the last one is 113. Is that the number? 113. Yes. Okay. Sending that to everyone. Let's go to breakout rooms. Uh, all right. Let me open up the rooms. Stop share on here. I'm still recording. You know. Okay, let's start that up. Okay, so we did 93, 97, 101, working through the rest, the four of them. <laughs> How far did y'all get? 
Um, I didn't actually like get any of them done because I was a little confused. Um, I was just wanting to see like where you got the negative two in like 89. Um, yeah, 89. Like, I, I just don't know where, you, like how to do it from there. Because I have the equations done, like I have the equa the equation done. I just don't know how to like solve it because in eighty nine you multiplied the equation by negative two, and I'm not sure where you got negative two from. Oh, okay. Where's my annotate? Oh, I'm not sharing. I can't annotate if I'm not sharing. Okay. So this one came from, we got the two equations. What was it? Uh, seven, was it seven Y and what? Yes. Three X hmm. equals 17. And then we also had what? Three Y and six X? Mm. Yes. Equals 12. Here I'm asking myself, do I want to find an LCM? I'm looking for the least common multiple. Do I want to find it between three and seven, which is what, like 21, I think? You. Yeah. Or do I want to find it between three and six, which would be six? So this is like you're finding a dot denominator or something like that. We're doing the multiple. So three, six, nine, 12, six, 12, 18. We went with six. Yeah, so we went with six. And so we need to make both of these things six. Well, this thing is already six. What do we multiply by three to get to six? Two. That's it. Oh, That's okay. why we multiply it by two. The other thing is the sign here. We want these things to be opposite. And so we have to make the two negative just so that sign's opposite. Oh, okay. I was making it more difficult than what it was. Okay, uh, let's clear that. Okay, and we want to go down to 93. The number of calories in two hot dogs and three cups of cottage cheese is 960 calories. The total number of calories in five hot dogs and two cups of cottage cheese is 900 calories. How many calories are in a hot dog? How many calories are in a cup of cottage cheese? Ooh. Uh, I can go through this one. Okay. So does it make it... Can y'all see that? Does it make it any easier if I make it a meme? <laughs> okay. That's what these remind me of. It's just like this is that meme on Facebook, right? We yeah. Have like a little picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except instead of pictures, we're literally just putting more different symbols in there. Same thing. It's, it's the same concept. If this was on social media, like I would really be like, probably willing to like answer these things but now that we're in math class it's like yeah don't answer it whatever okay so <laughs> what'd you like your variables be <laughs> uh so i did x and y just because that's what my oh. brain works on apparently i know uh i did x for hot dogs number of what are we doing calories is that what they're number asking? of calories per hot dog and uh y would be uh, the number of calories per cup of cottage cheese. And then I took the, pretty much split the question into two or three. Uh, so the first equation, which is the two hot dogs and three cups of cottage cheese equals 960 calories, turned that into 2X plus 3Y equals 960. And then the second part, I turned that into 5x plus 2y equals uh, 1,190. Okay, so I want to make sure everyone sees where we're getting these equations from. So two hot dogs, three cottage cheese is 2x and 3y, and that's going to give me 960. <clears throat> the other thing, total calories in what, five hot dogs, and two cottage cheese is 11.90 is the other thing I need to write. And so I believe what you said was 5x and 2y. Yep, and uh, equals 11.90. Equals 
1190. And then the way I went about it is I saw what I'm focused on the Y's, uh, the Y variables for a second and figured out how to make those similar so I could subtract them from the equation. Uh, so I uh, times the whole equation, uh, the whole first equation by two, which would so, turn it into... Oh. So we're looking between two and five or we're looking between two and three. You're probably gonna pick uh, smaller numbers, right? Is what you're saying? I'm gonna pick yeah. this 3y and this 2y. And so I'm thinking between three and two, what's my LCM? uh six. i guess yeah yeah that's it yep so i timed the the 2x plus 3y the first equation by two and i times the second equation by three so we want to multiply this thing by two when we multiply this side we're multiplying two different things over here right yes uh, and this one we want to multiply by three uh yes one has to be negative which one? It's going to be negative three. All right. So you, that, you, it's either one, right? I, yeah, you, I didn't do negative, but I guess that's another way. Did you do subtraction mm -hmm. when you did the two equations? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I just, see, the, the, the this is just like the way the book does it. If you're subtracting things correctly and you can do the subtraction correctly, that's okay. But like the way the mm -hmm. book does it is the way that I'm kind of doing it. They don't do subtraction of two equations. They only do addition. So if we're yeah. only doing addition, we have to throw that negative in there just so they end up different signs. But I right. think this and is I guess there. since uh, you did negative, the whole rest of mine will be different. No, no it'll be really cool. similar. No, no. It'll match up like right after this one step. Okay. Uh, I think. <laughs> so at least the first one would turn into 4x plus 6y equals uh, 1,920. Mm -hmm. 20, that's two times 960. Yeah, that's it. So this is coming from, just so people aren't confused, that's coming from that equation. Now we got to do this equation here. And so we're doing that one. We're getting, you probably got a positive 15. Negative, yeah. So it'll be negative 15 plus uh, negative six equals, I guess, negative 3,570. Yes. 3,570. Yes. Which is two times, three times 11, excuse me, 90. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now we want to do, what do we do all this for? Uh, from, yes. We did so it all to just... eliminate these things, hopefully. By elimination. So if I'm looking along here, I'm looking down. And I wrote it in a way that like terms are over like terms when I write these equations, right? I think they, they're kind of set up that way in the equation, but hopefully you're writing like terms over like terms that makes life easier. So I can see like four and a minus 15 should give me what? Negative 11. Yeah, and it should match up with what you have like right here now, huh? Yeah, it's all except for the negative, and then yep. it would be sixteen fifty or a negative sixteen fifty, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I just divide it by eleven, uh, which equals x equals one fifty, or negative one fifty. Yeah, it should be positive when we divide oh, no, by yep. the negative. <laughs> and then you Ooh. take the x variable, which was the one fifty, and you put that into the uh, first equation which is the uh, 2x plus 3y equals 960. So this is the so step, that, this is, this is the step where people see this thing and they're like, oh man, I'm there. No, nah, we're, we're mm -hmm. not quite all the way there yet. So we got to so take just this. the hot dog calories. That's the hot dog calories. You still got to find cottage cheese calories. <laughs> yes. You so, eat five hot dogs and two cups of cottage cheese. What do you have? High cholesterol. That's what you have. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I wrote the equation um, with the X variable we just calculated. So it'd be two times 150 uh, plus three Y equals 960. And that 
two times 150 turns automatically into 300. And just to like highlight where this is coming from, this is coming from the original equation up here. So we get a solution, we come back, we plug it into one of our original equations. We have two different choices. We're plugging it in there and we're solving for now a y, which is 300 plus 2y. Uh, this is this is almost. So, yep, would be 960. 960 is what it is. And then I uh, take away the 300 from the left, which means I have to take it away from the right. So it'd be uh, 960 minus 300. So that would equal 3y equals 660. And then just divided that by three to get the Y by itself and Y equals 220. So a cup of cottage cheese would equal 220 calories. Yep. And so we have our two solutions. They should probably write a little bit of English to tell people what they are. Mm -hmm. There are 150, I'm going to say it out loud, but I don't know if I'm going to write it out. There are 150 calories in one hot dog. There are 220 calories in one cup of cottage cheese is what this is telling me. You need us to write this in the, in the homework or? Yeah, yeah, you should hopefully write, write out an interpretation. It'll take you about half the time it took you to do that problem probably, not even. You did all that work. Give me a good sentence. <laughs> okay. The way I always remember it, if is if it's a, a large word problem, just write it out to be safe. Yeah, just like, usually, yep. Usually if we're giving you a question in English, we want some a good bit of English back. Just like one hot dog equals 150 calories, one cup of cottage cheese equals 220 calories. And that's simple enough, it takes 30 seconds. So yeah, that's how I always remember it. All right, now we've got some angle problems. Uh, the difference of two complementary angles is 17. Find the measure of the angles. All right, so I'm going to set these up, I think. And then I think I'm going to jump to that last one because we don't have too much time left, but these are pretty similar. The difference of two complementary angles. What does complementary mean, first off? That's the thing that you really got to know, huh? 90 degrees yeah oh man this is so stupid <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is the way i remember it c is 90 it takes two c's i remember this from like i don't even know what grade uh third grade or something i don't know it takes two c's to make an s i don't know if you ever heard that but it, it, c is the complementary it takes two c's to make an s one c that way one c that way it's two nineties is one eighty. That's forever how I'll probably remember it in my brain. <laughs> uh, so if that helps you, uh, good. I guess uh, where are we at? These two things. Okay. So what? Give me two variables is what I need, right? I'm going to do A and B. I'm going to make y'all do something besides X and Y. Who, come on in. What are y'all leaving for? Uh, now you're in my way. Where's my text? If I do A and B, what are my A and B? A and B. Angle one. The angle one, yeah, the measure of angle one. Of, where's my ticker? There you go. First angle. And if that's the measure of the first angle, this is the measure of the second angle. Second angle. There you go. Look at that. And if I set it up that way, the difference between two complement. Ooh, they give you so much in one sentence. Look at this. The difference of two complementary angles is 17 degrees. I want to focus just on this word first. If I know they are complementary angles, what can I tell you? What can you tell me about them? They should equal 90 degrees when you add them. So when we add them, so when we add A and we add to B, that should equal, what'd you say again? 90 degrees? Mm, yeah. Something like A plus B equals 90. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just off of that one word. If I see two angles and I know they're complementary, I can write something like A plus B equals 90. The other part that's here <clears throat> it says what? Difference, difference is 17 degrees. Point. What does that mean? It's A minus B. A oh, minus yeah. B equals 17? Yes. Okay. Can I do B minus A? Does it matter? Yes. No, we can't. No, we can't. It's just going to change which one's your larger angle. So if you did the other way, that's probably also fine. If I see this, how do I probably want to do this? Elimination. To find elimination. This is like almost set up right there for elimination. You put yeah. one over the other. I can find the other one. Draw a line down there. That should eliminate what variable? Why? B. Why? Why or B? Oh, sorry. B. B. So I'm almost there. What is this? 2A equals? 73. 90? No, no, it's not 73. Sorry. Just B107, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, 107. Oh man, 27. And so A is? 107 over 2. That's crazy. 107 over 2. 3.5. And the other one, since they're complementary, I'm going to do it right quick. But it's what, 36.5? I know I'm skipping a little bit, but I want to get through these problems right quick. You should get this set up. I want to set up the next one, and then I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to get those equations set up. So let's do the equation set up for this next one. The difference of two supplementary angles is 88. Find the measure of the angle. So if I do supplementary, how does that change this equation? And I'm still going to do the same I'm still going to do A is one angle, B is the other. It's 180 now instead of 90. It's 180 instead of 90. So I still have A plus B yes. is oh, equal to 180. And the other one, I have the difference is 88. 88. So what does that look like? A minus B equals 88. Yep. And you think you can solve A and B from there, hopefully? Yes, but elimination. It's almost exactly the same as we just did, right? Yeah, it's the same process, but my problem, it's the number when I... <laughs> yeah, they, just, they just changed the numbers a little bit, but same problem. All right, college roommates, Don, John and David were driving home to the same town for holidays. John drove 55 miles per hour, and David left an hour later, drove 60. How long will it take David to catch up to John? So what did y'all do? What what should you probably do if they give you this problem? The box. I would do a box. Okay. What do you mean by box? Please. If you do a box, it might help you to sort things out a little bit. So because just draw boxes. By uh, the distance, by uh, it's like physics. I did here, yeah. Distance is equal to is this 113? Oh, yeah, this is 113. Distance is equal to what times what? The x, Do you the x that? equals 55, uh, 55 h, like h is the hours, mm. it's r times which time. is the time, r times. T for time, right? This is like miles per hour. If I'm driving, what, 60 miles per hour and I do it for two hours, I'm driving 60 times two or 120 miles total, right? Mm -hmm. 
So this is the relation that these things have. So now I got to think about things. Uh, and what does this tell me? I am just like one took over the line there. Uh, I need to scroll this up without scrolling into the problem. All right, college roommates, John and David are driving home. Oh, it didn't say anything. It starts right there. John drove 55 miles per hour. And so we probably want one of these guys to be what? Talk about John. We probably want one to talk about David. <laughs> Those are the two different people whose distance we want to talk about. So do we know how? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think we know the distance that John drove, right? Not yet. It should be the same as David if they're catching up, right? We don't know this yet. My rate, does it say the rate that John drove? No. Mm. Yes, the rate is the same. Yeah, one. 55 yeah. miles 55. an hour. All right, so John drove 55. I guess he's not Sammy Hager or something. I don't know. Uh, but it, does it say the time? John drove 55, left an no, hour later? No, we don't know the time. Only, only with David, he drove an hour later. We know David drove an hour later, or left an hour later, right? Left an hour later. Okay. And we know that he drove 60 miles per hour. And so what's the thing we want to find out? It says how much or how long will it take? David, to catch up. John. If you're asking someone how long it will take, you're asking them how much time. Time, right? So we want to know the time. It took David to catch up to John. Yes. So I would let this thing be my variable, probably. You can let the other one be your variable. Yes, the first variable is x equals to 55 h, and the second one is y equals to 60 times h minus 1, because it's... Okay, so this one, we have to be careful about how we write this. So if David was on the road for t hours... Mm -hmm. it's t and one but we got to think is it plus or minus is he on the minus. road plus. an hour more or an hour less an hour more he's in the road an hour, an hour more why he said left hour later so david left an hour later which gives john an extra hour so there's a whole hour that john's driving that david is not driving is what this is telling me and it's, this is a weird wording thing that trips a lot of people up. It even trips me up, which is why I'm going through it so slow, just to make sure I have it the right way. Uh, In this case, how we are going to write the, this equation, this variable, this, uh, yeah. This okay. Thing. So now we want to think about how to write the distance. We know distance is my rate times my time. Yes. So what does this thing look like? If I know my rate is 55 and I know my time is T plus one? Uh, 55. And this is... equals to one. And then T plus one. That's exactly it. We're just multiplying these two things together. Yeah, there's some distribution to do in there. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to write it out in this step, I think. What about this one? If I do that one, can we figure out what the distance David drove would be? 60 times T. And I think if you reverse them, I think you get numbers that don't make sense. You get like negatives or something probably. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me, teacher, here to David catch uh, the, the other one, he needs to be the same distance and the same distance. Like if you are Oh, to... okay. Yeah, it was a good, that's the next step, right? What do I know about yeah. these two distances? If they're going to catch each other, they have to be equal. equal. To equal. So this one, let me get a good dark red. This one is equal to this one, right? These two things. Yeah. 
And so can we set up an equation? So well, yeah. oh, first, first let's let's look at the table. I think maybe just a second just to look at this table. I know we're over like by eight minutes probably, but we're almost done. This is like one of the probably one of the one of the more difficult problems that we'll ever go up over in class, I feel like. Do we understand where everything is coming from the table? We get 55 miles for John, 60 miles for Dave. That's coming almost straight from the problem itself. We know that Dave leaves an hour later. So if this is T, this one has to be T plus one. Alternatively, and I guess I'll go ahead and do it in a different color. But if you did this one, you could do you could solve for him, and you can make this one t minus one. So if you did it differently, you just have to remember how you defined your variables. So if you did it differently, you, you could still get the same solution. There are multiple ways to do it. But excuse me, teacher. Here for John, it's it's no for David, it's fifty five t. 55 t and for David is uh, 60 times t plus one, right? It would be t minus one if you set it up that way. If you do t me, I, Yeah, I did t and did, did t minus one and right now you confused me. You said it's plus one hour. If you do, if you do John as t, Dave has to be t minus one. But if you do it the other way around where Dave is T, John has to be T plus one. So there are different ways to set it up. I want to do the T plus one. So we are the tip for David. right here. We just got to write this out on a single line. But I got my table constructed. I know that these two things are equal. And so now I have this equation. I believe it only has t's in there. I think this is probably solvable from everything that we know, right? 55 equals 60t. 60t minus times. So then it'll be 55 5t. Yeah, 55 equals 5t. We're going to subtract that 55 over. And so I'm going to swap my T's or what side my T's are on. But I think T is giving me 11. And we're talking about hours? Hours, right? So what does this tell me? I want to go back and interpret this thing. Who drove 11 hours? Uh, Dave, Dave did. David. Yeah, ignore. Whoops. Not that one. Dave told ignore ignore those, to right? Yeah, David. David drove 11 hours. Okay. John drove 12. And John was on the hour, was on the road an hour before. So John drove 12 hours. Wait, what? John is T. Dave is T, right? Which is T is 11. But if we do T plus one, we're doing 11 plus one is going to give us 12. Right? So like I was saying, you can define your variables differently. But if we define them differently, we're going to get different solutions. So if I define this one to be, if I flipped them, this one would be defined as t. This one would be defined as t minus 1. And so what I'd end up getting is I would end up getting probably this 12 first. And then I would have to subtract one to figure out what Dave did. So this is part of the reason why we say define your variables first, right? Make sure you have them defined. Didn't they drive? Oh, but they drove at a different pace. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so he's driving a little bit faster and leaves later. I think if you flipped them and didn't do them right, if you did this instead of that or something, um, I think you end up getting negatives. Like if we put T plus one here and T here, if we flip these two, I think you end up getting negatives and things that don't make sense. So this is really, I think this right here, finding out which one is T and which one's T plus one, that's the thing that makes me pause and take a second and be like, 
This guy was on the road an hour more. I feel like this um, is complicated for no reason. Yeah, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out how. Why did you put the 60 T in the 55 plus 55 times T plus one together? Because I was thinking that it would be two equations, one for John's time and one for David time. That's where I was at. Uh, but I mean, I'm not. We I'm, do uh, kind of have two equations in here. This is the distance for John, and this is the distance for David. And we know that these two distances have to be the same because of what they tell us in the problem. That they want to know when they meet, so that means their distance is the same. So but that this, means that it would be one equation. Okay, so. This um, is basically for we set up for John, but in order to find out how faster it is for day um to catch up, we have to put David's distance on with the time, right? That what you're doing, like yeah, that, have to in calculate. order to find that, and then we go, then yes. we get John's so, equation. So to figure where they meet up, that's telling us the distance is the same. So in order to find it, we have to find what their distance is. And so we're finding this distance, but we're finding this distance because we know distance is equal to rate times time. And so yeah. we're, we're, if this is the question, where are we getting that 55 T plus one? We're getting that from 55. And let me move, ooh, not that, come on. Let me move these like answers out of the way, maybe a little bit. So yeah, easy. I know that John drove 55 miles. We're doing that times this, right? We're doing 55 times T plus one because we know rate times time will get us to distance. Right. Well, no, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't have a problem with that, but I just wasn't figuring out how come you put David's equation and John's equation together because on the other ones, on the other process of elimination, um, we we did two separate ones. Let's, uh, let's, is this good? Yeah, I mean, you see I, what I'm saying? I could probably write it as two separate equations. It, it might make more sense, but like we have we have distance equals fifty five times t plus one. We're we're actually doing substitution here. And it may not be like super apparent. That's what we're doing. Uh, 60T. But we have to find out what the 55 um, times T plus one is first, right? But we and know. And we have to find out what the 60D, that one is, right? If we did it separately. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we know that these are both the distance D, right? And we know that these two things are the same. So that tells us that these two things have to be the same. Okay. So we are doing substitution. We're plugging in this for D. We're substituting okay. in for D is essentially what we're doing. But D is isolated on one side. So it, it probably looks like we're just butting the two equations together. Yeah, I got it now. <laughs> it, just, it just makes it easier to, to put them together. And then, then it shows that they're, they're actually separate because of the equal sign mm -hmm. with the 60 T, but that, you know, that makes it easier writing instead of writing the, the, uh, the second part of the, that you wrote by separating it, right? Yep. Okay, I got you. Uh, Ooh, this is a crazy thing. Oh, sorry. I <laughs> you're all right. I would I definitely- my suggestion for these problems is to do the table and fill out each little box in the table that you can. Like that is the best sort of way to do it. Uh, I just had a... I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Brian. Bye -bye. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just had a quick question. I did it a completely different way, more like a logic puzzle with a tiny little bit of math. Um, just like, so John drove an hour before David he drove 55 miles an hour. So he is 55 miles um, ahead of David because he drove for an hour. So then I just kind of 
looked at David, he drew, he drove uh, 60 miles per hour, which is five miles per hour faster than John. So I kind of just made the tiny little equation of five times X equals 55, which is 11, which is the amount needed to catch up because every hour David or every hour David drives, he catches up five miles. It sounds like you're doing this. Just I think like I did that, but more logic like. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's. What I know it's okay write. for this problem, but I mean others. I just wanted to know if I wrote something similar to that. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work for every problem. It's like what I was going to say. Like probably, probably not, works. but yeah. that was the easiest way. My brain just went, "Oh, that makes sense." Because they can it. set these tables up differently. Yes. Just like forewarning, this the, this structure happens, and we'll probably. We'll probably do some problems over like with some similar structures like this, but there are different ways they can kind of structure this table, depending how okay. they ask you the question. Yep. Okay, dokie. Wow. Okay, the northern came out. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? We're like pretty over time now, but I'm here for questions if y'all got them. Hello. Please, teacher, what's the answer here? Is it, uh, is it X equals to, oh, well, that's not this one. Is it 12 hours? By John, John drove for 12 hours, Dave drove for 11. So I believe they're asking, how long will it take David to catch up to John? I believe it's 11 hours is the one that they're looking for, was David's time. Like the David, David catch drawn by 12 hours it no. took him 11 hours to catch up because he drove for 11 hours john drove for 12 right so john was on there like an hour before right ah i just deleted all that so i think they're asking how long to catch up that would be the 11 hours See, they can also ask how long did John drive, right? That's also another question they could ask. They didn't ask it, but we can answer it. We found it. Yeah, there's a very similar one in your written homework. So reminder, <laughs> I got office hours if y'all need to come by. <laughs> for class any other questions thank you and have a good day okay thank take you. care man uh, yeah. okay Stop that stop recording